Okay, um, this is um, Module D, Lesson 4, The Still Life. And I've got my um, pattern drawn out on my transparency. But um, Donna Rose includes a lot of information about pigments in the first part of her lesson. So I thought we'd go over that a little bit and track them on the pigment wheel. So, first of all, she talks about the brownish-red-violet background, that it's warm and needs to cool naphthol red so that it will not take over the oranges, and it's a nice foundation for the oranges. A touch of black will darken it and keep it cool. Okay, here's our naphthol red. And pardon uh, the lawnmower sound, that's my son mowing our grass. The next, she talks about red-violet, who is right, which is right here on the uh, pigment wheel, and if we put our ruler there, you notice that uh, they are both on the outside part of the wheel, so they are both pretty um, good intensity, not toned. And it also says in her paragraph that you can use a touch of black to darken it. Well, let's swing this around from our napfall red and our red violet to the black, and you see why that darkens and why it tones it because we go straight into the center of the wheel from here to here and we put a little bit of it and it draws it down this way and darkens it and tones it same with red violet we do the same thing okay uh, we use red violet instead of alizarin crimson because red violet has a number one light fastness uh, factor and alizarin crimson is a number four. It's unreliable. After a few years it will fade and your paintings can look washed out. Okay, so we use red violet instead of alizarin crimson. And we can use the red violet also to tone our naphthol red because let's look here and let's, let's put our ruler right here where naphthol red is and let's put something else right here where red violet is. So you can see that red violet is closer to that second circle than, red, than the naphthol red is. The naphthol red is right here at the edge of the circle. So by mixing them together, and if you want to, you can just bring your finger right out here and you see how far apart they are on this uh, pigment wheel and you have all this area right here to tone for, you know, for areas of to amount of toning. Okay, so then she goes to the yellows and she talks about raw umber and that one is here, center of the wheel, in the yellow green area and when you mix it with burnt umber which is right here, which is in the yellow orange area you can mix a little bit of burnt ember and you can get a very dark yellow. Raw sienna sits at right here, kind of a spectrum almost, well, kind of yellow orange. And it's not quite as toned as the umbers are. You see, it's in the second circle, not the third. So, um, if you use raw sienna to make your dark yellow it would it's lighter and it would use less of your burnt umber for a toner the greens well if you're making greens and you use raw sienna then you won't get too bright of a green if you're uh, making a green with uh, ultramarine blue or taylor blue and you use Hansa yellow you're going to get a bright green or especially if you use taylor green blue you're going to get a bright green and if you use the raw sienna, you see how much farther in the wheel it is, and you get a better toned, more toned green when you mix with raw sienna instead of yellow. Now, Hansa yellow is a very cool yellow. It's way down in here, very next to the spectrum yellow. And Hansa yellow light is even more of a cool yellow. Let me rephrase that. Hansa yellow is not as cool of a yellow as y Hansa yellow light. It's just Hansa yellow light is closer to the green, and you see it is cooler than this. The Hansa yellow is closer to the reds. So I'm sorry I misspoke there for a minute. 
and it's a good replacement for cadmium lemon that a lot of artists use for brass a lot of that's an oil color and then it's come up here to diorolide yellow right here and it's even warmer it's got even more red in it and it's a bright medium yellow and leans towards orange and it works really well with the reds and oranges and it's a good replacement for the regular toxic cadmium yellows and it mixes real well with yellow oxide which is right here to make a nice toned yellow um, kind of yellow orange and it's a good one to use with greens with blues to make a green okay and um, also notice that yellow oxide sits closer in the wheel here one of your roses back there bloomed oh really all right okay so um when you're trying to choose between um, diorolide yellow and yellow oxide if you want a less bright color then choose yellow oxide uh, our Hansa yellow going back to that it does not have the same strength as diorolide yellow because you see there's more red in there and it has more strength so if we want to lighten some yellows that we're making and we don't want to use white to make it chalky then we can use a Hansa yellow to lighten and brighten and it won't make anything cloudy okay let's move over to the blues it's a good mixing color for a toned green and a brighter violet it's way out here on the outside of the of the wheel so you know the color is going to be brighter. Okay, then move back over here to the oranges. Naphtha red light is over here as opposed to our naphtha red that was there. And Hansa yellow or diorolide yellow will give you a bright orange. Let's track that. So there's naphtha red light, and here's diorolide yellow, and here's Hansa yellow also right here. They're just bright in line with each other. So you see that if you make a yellow using a combination of the naphtha red light and either of these yellows, you get a very nice bright orange. And vermilion is sitting right in the middle of here somewhere with a nice red orange. And that's what you'll get if you mix these the naphtha red light and either Hansa yellow or Darylide yellow. One will be a little more red than the other. Uh, burnt umber is what we use to doll the oranges, which is right here. So it's right there in that same area, and it's in the center of the wheel, and it will tone your oranges very well. And then all of our earth colors are sitting right here in this area. The uh, natural oxides belong in the center of the wheel. Uh, brown matter is one um, English red oxide is here it's right here next to burnt sienna yellow oxide is there and they're all here in the center towards the center some are closer to the center than others and then we make the best toners we're going to be using some of all of these toners for uh, this palette for this still life and use a lot of them the burnt umber and the burnt sienna sit toward the reds, the raw sienna leans toward the yellows, and the raw umber toward the greens. Okay, so um, I think it's important for us, even at this point in our, um, in our uh, studies, to study these pigments and really get to know them. We've been having a discussion on the list at the time that I'm taping this, and uh, about how and why you need to know your pigments.